Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Views and News, and I'm Faisal Rahman, live on our uh, PTP World in our Islamabad studios. Today, we'll be talking about uh, the visit of the Foreign Minister, Bilawal Zardari Bhutto Saab. He's going to United States of America uh, on a two-day official visit. And uh, perhaps one of the youngest foreign minister is visiting America. And interestingly now, since uh, I would say the Minister of State, Hina Rabani Khar, who has already served as the federal uh, minister uh, for foreign affairs. Uh, obviously, this makes a good uh, unit, a very strong team as far as uh, the foreign policy is concerned. One an experienced one, one a new one. But um, I think uh, there is a lot of uh, vision uh, that is there. Now, talking about uh, strengthening you know, the Park US relationship, I would say that uh, as far as uh, the year 2011 is concerned, that was the year when the differences actually emerged. Emerged to an extent that Pakistan had to stop the NATO supplier because of the Salala incident in which 28 soldiers were killed by the Americans. Two other very important incidents also took place in the same year. One was the issue of Raymond Davis and the second was about Osama bin Laden, 2nd May 2011. Now that was the beginning of the trust deficit that existed, that was there and then uh, we got to know that uh, the Americans really engaged the Indians and the strategic partnership emerged. Bika was signed. Pakistan, who was a transactional partner with the United States of America, still remains one. But now, once the American forces withdrew uh, from Afghanistan, the entire blame game again was on Pakistan. All the irresponsibilities that were there by the Americans, all their wrong decisions that were taken regarding Afghanistan, all the failures that the Americans had to face, they blamed them on Pakistan. So this is what the current situation is. Now, how far can we go to mend that? Will it come back to the actual uh, bond, the kind of relationship that we have seen in 60s or perhaps around that time period in 50s also? Or even during the time of General Musharraf when we were regarded as a non-NATO ally. But it seems that there is going to be a lot of hindrance, a lot of problem, and this part is not going to be very easy. Now, before I introduce you to our panelists, our production team has prepared a report. Let's watch that first. The Shehbaz Sharif-led coalition government is steadily progressing Pakistan towards an improved and more rational foreign policy direction. Since Bilawan Bhutto Zardari has taken the office of Foreign Minister of Pakistan, he is consistently working to prove to the world that Pakistan always prioritizes rational and constructive engagements when it comes to foreign policy choices and is an advocate of mutual and interdependent global economic prosperity. In this regard, Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, at the invitation of United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken, is visiting New York for attending the ministerial meeting on Global Food Security Call to Action, which is going to be held at the United Nations on 18th May 2022. The aim of this meeting is to bring together a regionally diverse group of countries, including those which are most affected by the food insecurity, as well as those which are in a position to take action to address it. The Foreign Minister will also participate in the open debate of the United Nations Security Council on maintenance of international peace and security, conflict and food security under the United States Presidency of the Council. On the other hand, the Foreign Minister will have other important engagements on the sidelines, including a bilateral meeting with the United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Earlier, Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, in a meeting with outgoing U.S. Charge D. Affairs, Anjali Adler, who paid a farewell call on him in Islamabad, reiterated to further strengthen Pakistan-United States relations and also invited the United States companies to invest in Pakistan. Now, to talk about this, we have with us uh, in our studio on my right is uh, Amir Hossein Saab, senior columnist, writer. Thank you very much, sir, you, for your time. And uh, we have with us on Skype, Lieutenant General Retired uh, Raza Muhammad Khan Saab, former President, National Defense University. Thank you very much, Al Saab, for your presence, sir. And uh, we will also be talking to 
Najmu Sakib Saab, a former ambassador, and we'll be talking to him on the telephone. But let me start off from you, uh, Amir Hussain Saab. Bilawal Bhutto, as a foreign minister, as a very young and dynamic foreign minister, along with Hina Rabbani Khair, as I earlier mentioned, who has also served uh, as a federal minister uh, for foreign affairs. Now, interestingly, both are very well-spoken, very articulate, both are foreign qualified, well-educated. And uh, Bilawal Bhutto, since the gentleman is going to go to United States of America on a two-day official visit, most likely is going to meet Mr. Blinken also. Do you think this man has that kind of a charisma? I'm not talking about the experience yet. Who can engage uh, the Americans and perhaps can do something regarding the eroding relationship between these two countries? I think uh, as a young, young outspoken, articulate uh, uh, political leader, he has all the potential to transform the relationship into better one. Uh, we are at the lowest of one of the lowest times of our relationship with the United States. There are different factors, reasons, but I think he is a right choice right now. Mm -hmm. The reason is that because uh, he can speak well, his his exposure is good. He has been into the world leading universities, and he has also worked with a uh, number of diplomats uh, in, in his political training. So he doesn't may, he may not have good experience in terms of uh, doing uh, the practical pract as a practitioner of foreign policy, but he has the will, the vision, and he has a team, as you said well. Hina Rabbani, she is very well uh, experienced and educated as well. And Hina Rabbani Khair has also served in the. Uh, economic division Absolutely. as a minister of state. So, so she has an interdisciplinary. And this experience. is about economic diplomacy now. Absolutely. See, it's a very good combo. Absolutely, this is a great combination, and also the will, the commitment, the energy of a young man will make a difference. Uh, but again, we have to look into the larger political dimension of the country. So, the foreign minister would only represent what is needed in the country and how things are reflected within the political uh, new, new, new regime, the coalition regime. So it has to be an alignment between what uh, the Bilawal Batu is going to say in the United States and what is uh, the political objective that has been set, set forth by the coalition government. So it has to be alignment, but to present those ideas, those objectives, Bilawal is the right person to my understanding. Now coming to you, General Saab, obviously you heard what uh, Amir Hussain Saab uh, said. Uh, now, I want your comments, sir. Uh, first of all, obviously, the relationship uh, has been eroded during the last uh, 12, 13 years when it comes to Pakistan-America relationship. But, Jal Saab, obviously, America is a superpower. You, you need to be in their good books. I'm not saying that somebody should become a blue-eyed boy or a girl, but at least you cannot be on the wrong side of the United States of America. How important this visit would be, number one. And secondly, sir, Bilawal Bhutto, since this is going to be a huge challenge for the young man uh, to mend the relationship, to improve uh, the bilateral uh, uh, problems and all. Your take, Jal Saab. Okay, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I hope you can hear me. Yes, you're clear, sir. All right. Uh, so I think uh, the basis of all foreign policy, whether it is Pakistan policy, or that of the United States or any other country is to promote uh, and uh, protect the national interest of uh, the respective countries. Uh, and I think uh, our foreign office uh, team would uh, do exactly the same. Uh, there may be actually uh, some areas uh, where our interests may clash. Uh, and uh, that all will depend uh, on what are the areas of discussion, uh, if at all, uh, there is a discussion uh, on, uh, you know, the foreign policy because, uh, as you said, uh, this uh, meeting has uh, another agenda. But if there are discussions on that, then uh, despite, you know, uh, the lack of mutual trust that is there now between Pakistan uh, and the United States uh, because of, uh, you know, a certain undiplomatic usage of uh, language uh, because of... Uh, our uh, relationship uh, with Russia or because of our uh, stance uh, you know, at the United Nations, 
uh, about uh, the Russian uh, invasion uh, of Ukraine. Uh, despite that, uh, I think uh, there are a number of areas of mutual interest. Uh, first of all, stability of Afghanistan, uh, I think, uh, uh, is a vital national interest of the two countries, uh, and I think that should be discussed. Uh, Counter-terrorism, again, emanating from Afghanistan uh, by ISIS and Al-Qaeda, uh, then I think, uh, I'm sure, our Foreign Office will uh, communicate, uh, you know, our concerns uh, about the Indian state-sponsored terrorism uh, in Kashmir and the rights of uh, minorities in India. Uh, then, uh, of course, you know, we have a very vibrant uh, Pakistani diaspora and Pakistani Americans in the U.S. There are more than 600,000 people uh, who are working uh, for the progress and prosperity uh, both uh, mainly of the United States, but also of Pakistan. Uh, mutual trade, uh, you know, would also be discussed, uh, which two-way trade is now, I think, uh, more than $7 billion, uh, right. but uh, it could be increased. Uh, and then uh, uh, at the same time, I think uh, this uh, issue uh, of allegations uh, by the U.S. Uh, for some kind of regime change uh, probably, I think that uh, would also come under discussion. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the you know the earlier uh, the U.S. government, although it has already denied any role of the United States in a regime change in Pakistan, uh, but I think uh, uh, they can uh, uh, actually uh, make more efforts uh, to clarify uh, their positions uh, on this matter. Uh, and uh, I think. Uh, uh, if the Supreme Court of Pakistan uh, formulates the commission as asked by the president of Pakistan uh, and the U.S. is prepared uh, really to provide uh, you know, its uh, viewpoint on that, uh, also be, I think, uh, in the interest uh, of the two countries. We are aware, you know, that uh, Pakistan-Russia relations uh, were based uh, on nothing but our mutual interest. Uh, and uh, we wanted actually uh, uh, get some oil and some wheat from Russia and concessional places. Uh, we are aware that only yesterday, I think there was a Reuters report uh, that uh, Russia, India has become the fourth largest supplier of oil uh, to India. Uh, so if India is getting, you know, uh, oil and other things from Russia, why not Pakistan? On discounted rates, sir. So, that is also very important. Yeah, and we also know, you know, that many European countries are still trading uh, with Russia uh, in terms of its supply uh, of natural gas uh, to them because it is uh, their compulsion, they are dependent uh, on them. Uh, so uh, I think uh, that uh, is an area uh, where I think the U United States uh, needs to understand uh, Pakistani positions and our rationale, uh, what happened in the past, uh, and uh, why uh, Pakistan uh, must, uh, you know, exercise its rights to have an independent policy, uh, to have relationships with other countries of the world, like the United States uh, is having relationships with any country, including India. Uh, so I think all these aspects will be uh, discussed, uh, and we are also aware that in the past, I think there was a visit of only one uh, private uh, U.S. Congresswoman, uh, Congressman Ilhan Omar. That was very well received in Pakistan. Uh, but yeah. I think uh, there needs to be official visits from both sides to remove, uh, you know, the mutual uh, mistrust between the two countries. I think that is the most important part. I mean, the mistrust uh, exists, whether we like it or we don't, on Absolutely. both sides. Yeah. Pakistan has always been looked upon by the United States of America and their establishment, let me put it this way, through the prism of Afghanistan from the last 22, 21 years. Yeah. Do you think, sir, now the game isn't 100% over, but at least there is a regime there, good, bad or ugly, that's a separate chapter. But what I'm saying is that the Americans are out officially. Do you think this is the right time to approach the Americans from a different perspective, number one. Secondly, 
one needs to highlight the areas of uh, the problem, I would say, whether it's about the transfer of technology, the military uh, hardware deals, spare parts of F-16 and so much more, Cobras mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, and last but not the least, um, the adversaries of the United States of America, China and Russia. China is our strategic partner and we are getting pretty close to Russia for various reasons. Perhaps it was the Afghanistan issue that brought us close or for various other matters as well. And then the visit of the former Prime Minister Imran Khan to uh, Russia and the meeting went on for about three and a half hours that what we were told. Now sir, getting close to China and Russia, what is that supposed to mean for the relationship between Pakistan and America? Well, I think uh, it is the time to redefine our foreign policy objectives, in particular with the United States of America. You know we have been uh, in good terms in Afghan war because uh, the uh, United States wanted Russians out, we wanted Russians out, and we wanted to see stability in our neighborhood, and that was the strategic objective there to bring two nations together for a common goal. Since Afghanistan is gone now, as you said, well, but now it is an opportunity to rethink about the larger technology transfer, economic deepening. We have more strategic interest with the United States, the strategic relationships, which are more transactional relationships, if you like. Now we have to look into the larger trade and the economic relationship, mm -hmm. but also kind of the people to people interaction, business to business interaction. And also, uh, you know, we have to look at uh, the other aspect as well, because we think that we are as a sovereign nation, we have multiple foreign policy objectives. One is to improve relationship with the United States, to bring it back to the track. The second is in our immediate neighborhood, we have to look at our economic uh, and the trade uh, interest. For example, uh, we need energy and, and Russia is just close to us. Iran is just close to us. And we have China as a strategic partner. And America wants a China con Chinese containment policy. We want a Chinese bit good relationship with China. So these are the separate uh, objectives that we will pursue. We are actually a part of the Chinese expansion plan. Absolutely. Gawadar for that matter. Absolutely. Gawadar, the CPEC and all that. And I think uh, this must not uh, affect the relationship because we think This that must not, but this has? Has all, yeah. This <laughs> will also. Yeah. Because, you know, the even American establishment, there is a conventional wisdom in, within American establishment. They don't change too, uh, too much. There's no dynamism in a way. Because they l took Pakistan as it was in 1980s. So they want us to submit to their objectives. We didn't submit to their objectives. We wanted to get our objective served with the co collaboration with the United States. Now we want our objective to be served, but not through a Afghanistan war type, you know, strategic relationship, but more economic deepening uh, ties, uh, creating regional stability because y Pakistan is a nuclear power. In this region, if you want to create stability, Pakistan must be stable, Afghanistan must be stable, and there has to be a arc of stability in the region. And then it will also serve the global interest. So Americans must understand that they have to be in our shoe to understand our problems. You cannot force us all the time to do more, do more, but we have to do more that suits to our interest as well. So I think we have to rethink the collaboration. This is a difficult time. Mm -hmm. So this is the test of uh, the leadership of uh, Bilawal Bhattu. So how, how would he and his team go forward with the rethinking the relationship, but also building trust and also convincing the Americans that the Pakistan would love to restore the relationship, but not at the cost of our trade and economic interest in the region. Well, so that, that's, that's a very, very important yeah. point. Now, Jal Saab, uh, please explain it to us and to our viewers also that Pakistan, um, but rather Jal Saab, if you allow me, sir, we have been joined in by Najmus Saqib Saab, a former ambassador. So let me put this question to him and I would like you to also comment on that. But uh, let me go to Najmus Saqib Saab. Assalamu alaikum, ji. Walaikum as -salam. Thank you, Faisal. Sir, good to have you in the show, sir. Uh, Nazim Saab, Thank you. since you have served as a very senior diplomat, you understand the importance uh, of the relationship 
with the United States of America. Pakistan has always been close to them, but during the last almost, uh, uh, I would say, 10 to 12 years, things have gone from bad to worse, especially the year 2011 of these major, because of these major incidents like Osama bin Laden's killing or Salala incident or Raymond Davis uh, was also involved in killing and eventually was taken away. But what I'm saying is that now it's the time to re-engage. And I think this is a great sign that Mr. Blinken has asked the foreign minister to visit United States of America. How important this visit would be, number one. And do you think the ice is melting now, sir? Thank you, Faisal. Uh, you have all, you know, almost uh, counted all those important incidents which took place. If we are referring to uh, Pakistan's relations with the, uh, the United States, personally speaking, I I divide these relations, uh, you know, uh, relations before saying absolutely not, and relations after saying absolutely not. Uh, although since 1947, 1948, relations have been, you know, there have been ebbs and flows and uh, crust and troughs, uh, up and down. But the uh, the damage that has been uh, done uh, lately in the last couple of years, especially. So I think this is the high time, you know, this was high time that somebody uh, at the level of foreign minister goes there. Now, the detractors of uh, this particular meeting uh, between Antony Blinken and uh, our foreign minister, Mr. Bilawal, uh, they say that, uh, you know, it's not a straightforward invitation and it's not going to be a one-on-one -on -one meeting, delegation level talks, etc., etc. I think anything which comes, uh, you know, in our way that we can talk to the United States and at that high level, uh, it should be grabbed, the opportunity should be taken. Now, I, as you said that ice is melting, I think before we uh, you know, start attaching a lot of expectations with this visit, uh, let us see the, you know, the latest situation right now. Latest situation is that it's after a long time, uh, two foreign ministers from these two countries will be sitting, you know, uh, one another uh, meeting, I am presuming that after the food security meeting, they might have uh, not only on the margins of this meeting, you know, uh, uh, this conference, but also uh, if they accept our uh, wish to uh, have a, a proper meeting, delegation level talks in Washington. Now, I mean, I, you know, I think that uh, if you have to sum it up in one line, Pakistan and United States relations from the perspective of Islamabad, uh, these relations need oxygen. Right now, uh, there is absolutely uh, no ox you know, uh, oxygen available to the relationship, and uh, they are suffocating. So much so that the, uh, you know, the uh, contingencies and the side effects of this, for instance, uh, that we are feeling in IMF or uh, FATF or other you know, areas, I think this is going to be a very, very important uh, uh, visit, but we should not expect that they should be saying something on Kashmir or Pak India relations. Uh, since the DGISI has already visited uh, uh, Washington and met the relevant people, so I think the focus is going to be on on uh, Afghanistan basically and the related issues. Uh, the uh, you know the idea is to create the enabling environment, the enabling environment to actually discuss. The good news is that in the last two years or so, they would always say that we are interested in counter-terrorism, we are interested in intelligence sharing, we are interested in border security issues and related security issues matter. This time, not only uh, N.C. Lincoln, but Ed Price, their you know, a spokesperson has said that yeah. we are ready to talk on commerce, we are ready to talk on economic trade. relations, trade mm -hmm. relations, mm -hmm. so much so that from trade, economic relations to climate change, so I think we should broach this opportunity and Mr. Bilawal should uh, stress on the need of normalizing relations. We are not going to expect anything, you know, uh, spectacular out of this visit. If the enabling environment are created, mind you that he is the foreign minister of an interim government. Washington knows this. Uh, a foreign minister of an interim government 
can have only interim results you know out of this but the optics will be very good all those people who have seen this in islamabad or in new delhi or in washington our experts etc the optics will be very good and that would be a good beginning if we are going to have proper you know talks on real issues bilateral issues which have been pending for the last you know a couple of years correct now jal saab uh, you heard what ambassador saab uh, said and i think uh, he really hit the nail uh, because the relationship currently uh, is, is, is i mean it is kind of a stagnant uh, situation sir but i think this visit is definitely going to pave way forward now jal saab uh, you also have served in the military and the role of military as far as the relationship between pakistan and america is concerned has been very vital very important also uh, most of the officers they go for their courses in america our dependency on the military hardware and so much more now jal saab how long will it take and what ingredient should it have in order to improve that relationship and bring it back to a certain level i'm not saying it's going to be a pretty hunky dory or or perfect situation but at least i mean i'll just give you one example so when we were the ally of the americans in this war on terror we were the most sanctioned ally i mean just imagine uh, so what i'm saying is that uh, areas where we should focus definitely commerce and trade is one so much more is happening all over the globe sir pakistan can play a very vital role i would say your take jal saab uh, okay uh, you see uh, as i mentioned earlier it's all about how you promote and protect uh, your national interest uh, i think uh, right now there is an opportunity for pakistan uh, to very candidly once again communicate all our interests and all our concerns uh, to the government of the united states even if they are not and, in alignment with the american interests sir no i'm talking of our interests but I'm sir for example to... our interest is not in alignment with the american interest then well as i said uh, you know uh, we will have to work on the mutual interest and at the beginning of my talk i think i identified at least seven or, or eight areas uh, which are uh, which could be mutually beneficial uh, to both countries wherever you know there is a clash of interest then in those areas we have to sit together uh, you know like equals uh, uh, like uh, mature countries like two independent countries uh, to find uh, you know areas uh, how to remove uh, you know the irritants and how to find uh, you know a middle path uh, so that uh, you know uh, there is uh, no possibility of any you know a uh, confrontation but i would repeat uh, that uh, we need uh, to communicate uh, you know all our interests uh, and uh, all uh, they actually know about our interest uh, but maybe you know we could communicate our concerns uh, once again to them uh, for instance i could add there are 2.5 million afghan refugees still in pakistan right uh, and uh, i think the international community uh, if they are not immediately aiding and assisting uh, afghanistan for some reasons then you know they could aid and assist pakistan uh, in looking after the sustenance of these refugees uh, because of uh, you know our economic conditions that could actually uh, become a mutual interest Uh, also you know there is uh, this forum of uh, troika uh, that troika could meet again in pakistan uh, or in china or elsewhere uh, to decide about uh, you know the recognition of the future uh, of afghanistan you must have heard uh, you know the interview uh, on cnn about uh, uh, of the afghan uh, interim interior minister uh, where yes. in, i think uh, he is made it very clear that uh, uh, he or the government of afghanistan does not consider the united states as its enemy uh, and that uh, you know they are prepared uh, to address you know all their concerns particularly uh, the educations of women uh, and human rights and other things of course all 
uh, you know, within the ambit uh, of uh, uh, career for which they have been working. Uh, so I think uh, uh, we can work uh, once again with them. We could once again invite the United States uh, to come and invest, you know, in the industrial zones uh, which uh, have been uh, established in Pakistan uh, through the CPEC. Uh, and I think uh, that will be a win-win for uh, both uh, Pakistan, the United States uh, and, and China. Uh, and uh, similarly, I think there are a number of peripheral issues that could also be discussed. You asked about the, uh, you know, the military to military, uh, uh, you know, relationship. Uh, they have been, uh, you know, always good because it benefited both countries. I mean, our officers have been going to their institutions for training. And similarly, their officers have been coming uh, to our institutions uh, for training. Uh, I think that, that uh, is continuing despite, you know, uh, some of the uh, negative uh, changes or impact uh, uh, in our, uh, you know, relationships in the recent past. Uh, let me also, you know, tell you that there are at least 150 Pakistani Americans who are serving uh, in the U.S. military. And many of them uh, have actually given their lives uh, in Iraq uh, and in other places. Uh, and they have uh, won, you know, the Bronze Star, and the Purple Heart, the highest uh, gallantry awards uh, of the United States. Uh, so they are there, you know, the Pakistani diaspora is there. Uh, they are actually contributing uh, to uh, uh, the development of the United States. Uh, and uh, I think so should the United States uh, increase, you know, its assistance and trade. You know, it, should, it has to be a combination of that uh, for a number of reasons uh, with Pakistan. Uh, and as I said, uh, you know, it needs to play a vital role uh, in, uh, in prevailing upon India uh, you know, to stop its belligerence against Pakistan uh, and also against its own minorities. These are the concerns, you know, which we need to communicate to the United States. Also, the issue of Islamophobia in India is a major concern of the people of Pakistan. And I think it also needs to be communicated. And I'm sure the United States will understand uh, that it is in the interest of India, the United States and Pakistan that the U.S., uh, which the people of Pakistan expects, you know, uh, to play a right, positive role uh, to influence, uh, you know, peace, stability and development in the entire South Asian region. All right. Now, uh, coming to you, uh, Amir Sen Saab, uh, do you think the, the attempt in the U.S.A. to make Pakistan a scapegoat to, for the failures in Afghanistan, that wasn't very well received in Pakistan? despite the fact that I think Pakistan has paid the ultimate price. Whatever we have, we have seen during the last 20 years, sir, we never even thought of it. Suicidal bombings and you name it, and, and we went through that. Yes, we are a resilient nation, but at the end of the day, sir, we are human beings also. What I'm saying is, sir, do you think the Afghan issue, which is the most vital, most crucial at the moment, and that is perhaps the reason for this economic uh, meltdown in the region also, because nothing is happening. The way forward, as far as Afghanistan issue is concerned, do you think, sir, Pakistan has always been a very important uh, member, and uh, so is United States of America, because nothing happens without their will and wish. How important this visit would be uh, to, you know, sort out the Afghan problem? Yeah, uh, I think, uh uh, right now, as uh, Ambassador was rightly putting it, uh, this is an interim regime. And uh, right now, the, this visit must be, a, the, the, the Blauel Bato and his team must be able to come up with a roadmap for the future relationship. Which means that as uh, we have- Keeping our national interest Absolutely. First. We have our own objectives because Pakistan is in crisis right now and we cannot, uh, go beyond a certain level, we have to, our internal dynamics, we have to understand that our economy, our trade, our uh, deepening of our own, you know, economic and political system, for that, we have to communicate to the United States that Pakistan has suffered, as you said, a lot, because we, in, in the war on terror, 
and before that in Cold War times, we put everything into the American basket and uh, the Americans, you know, they wanted us to do everything. But ultimately when they withdrew from the region, they, they left us and they left Afghanistan and all that. Now we have to make them realize that Pakistan is a sovereign nation. It has its own people, 200 uh, million people are living here. They have their interest and this country needs to be looked at a diff from a different prism that Pakistan has been supportive, but Pakistan has, has problems of Pakistan have been accumulated because of that war on terror. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this realization will come only if our foreign minister and the whole team of the cabinet in the interim regime is on, on a one page in terms of understanding that Pakistan has to put together a narrative or a lingua which will serve the long-term relationship a roadmap, a strategic roadmap is required right now. We cannot expect much. I mean, when Bilawal goes and the things will not be changed automatically, but there has to be some, uh, some eyes will There's be also the optics matter. Some optics matter, and, but also it is important that, that uh, the, 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 there are certain circles with the, you know, in, within the United, establishment of the United States who always favor Pakistan. So we have to reconnect with them first so that our message goes across all the, uh, the, 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 the important power corridors in the United States. So it's a long-term engagement. It's the beginning of a new era. And I hope it has to be a quid pro quo in terms of policy. Can we forget the past? Yeah. We can, we cannot forget, but we can we learn the lesson. Of the past. We can learn the lesson and we say that, look that we did a lot, you did a lot. Let us now look at the quid pro quo, the policy which will be mutually beneficial for us and for them as well. So if you look at Pakistan as a partner in your larger international scheme, then we are here. If you want to use us as a proxy, we will not be. Because it doesn't create good world, it doesn't create stability, it doesn't, uh, the anti-American sentiments are very high in Pakistan because we feel deceived, we feel cheated by the United States. So these are the things that we have to communicate to them that we have to uh, create a viable and a mutually trusted and multi-dimensional relationship. I think that's very important. Now, Ambassador Saab, uh, I would like your comment on this uh, uh, bitterness of the past and perhaps uh, is it that simple in the diplomatic world uh, that things can change any moment, sir? Or is it about the uh, change of the mutual interest? What exactly matters there, sir? Vessel, I couldn't hear you properly, but what sir, I have uh, okay, understood I, I, I'll say, sir, because I what we have that. witnessed in the past uh, uh, decade or so, that uh, uh, the bitterness was very much there in the relationship. Uh, sometimes they would blame, sometimes we would blame. Then there was this trust deficit element, which again, uh, in fact, uh, really uh, pushed these two countries away from each other. But sir, one thing which is important is that uh, you can move forward, but can you forget the past? This moving forward uh, thing that you have just mentioned, that is what I refer to, that you need to create enabling environment. But sir, when you I say will enabling reiterate environment, what exactly do you need to have in there? Uh, Of course, they know that uh, who, you know, the government, that they blame them, uh, Washington and uh, uh, the government there, that there was a conspiracy against uh, the PTI government. Uh, that government has gone. And uh, they know it, and that is why uh, some positive vibes are coming from Washington. You are absolutely right that this bitterness has to go so that we could talk like civilized people. A couple of things are very important here as we are analyzing the, you know, the relationship between Pakistan and USA. Number one is that it is not an equal relationship. Please note that Pakistan... Uh, is a small country as far as economics is concerned, as far as its, uh, you know, political and uh, diplomatic value is concerned. Number two, that we have always been, always been on the receiving end. It was only the war on terror and all these things relating to the region and Afghanistan that Pakistan was, you know, the apple of their eye and... Uh, uh, as far as our sacrifices are concerned, they know it. 
but they they th- they say that uh, why should we appreciate for those things those uh, you know sacrifices that pakistan did so many soldiers so many civilians did their lives you know in this war and terror because we paid for it you got some money from them you got some uh, you know arsenal from them you got a lot of military and uh, civilian aid from them so we have to understand this that it is not an equal relationship after staying there in afghanistan 20 years of you know their departure from afghanistan uh, they had actually said uh, you know goodbye to that area the only thing at the, right now is that how are they going to treat taliban and are taliban going to budge anywhere or are taliban going to listen to all those conditions that they have imposed what is going to happen to those frozen assets of taliban or kabul now the third thing is that in an each and in an, an inequal relationship you cannot expect them uh, or you cannot dictate your terms look right now we cannot have a foreign policy uh, you know postulation and formulation of a foreign policy between pakistan and usa it's an interim period all we can do is to make sure that our immediate interests especially the uh, forex situation especially the economic situation should be addressed and if america cannot do it maybe through its friends you know we need urgent help that's why i use the word oxygen look by 30th of june you need at least 10 billion dollars special just to sustain the import bill is going up we need we, we need urgent treatment and for that i think that uh, uh, the foreign minister must uh, you know make them cognizant of this fact that at the moment we are not interested in long term planning or even medium term planning right now we want to you know uh, get away with this bitterness created between the two countries number one number two we are there to help in counter terrorism in border security in intelligence sharings we are there and that is why dgi's you know uh, uh, visit to washington but at the same time we can tell them that we are in need of dire need of funds right now our forex I is going you know that, uh, americans are more aware very bad situation and we need uh, help now even if they say that okay we will help you even if they say that we can't help you right now because there are certain you know conditions on that and there was a senate bill which was proposed because they still think no no vessel this is important they yes. still think that as far as as far as uh, uh, afghanistan is concerned and coming to power of taliban is concerned pakistan played a pivotal role remember they they you know uh, tabled a bill in the senate that all those perpetrators and all those people you know who helped them they are going to be held accountable so there are certain misconceptions besides this bitterness that you refer to which need to be clarified absolutely in clear unequivocal unequivocal terms but at the same time the immediate needs of pakistan especially in the economic sector they have to be put across and let us keep our fingers crossed that america says yes either directly or through its friends all right all right now last closing remarks from you jan saab pakistan needs america perhaps america doesn't need pakistan that much and if they do so that is regarding uh, afghanistan and as as ambassador saab rightly said that pakistan is a small country you should not expect uh, them to engage you at the same level they are the super power sir yeah they they of course uh, are a big power uh but uh, when we come to uh, you know the protection and promotion of pakistan's interest then we must talk to them as equal there is no other way uh, but to do so uh, okay uh, also let me uh, just clarify that you know the economic losses in the last 20 years were close to 150 billion dollars and uh, the total money with the united states paid pakistan for the usage uh, of our road infrastructure uh, for uh, the logistic provided uh, to them for the use of uh, you know uh, karachi ports and other ports 
uh, was less than, uh, I think, $25 billion. Uh, but uh, so to say, you know, that they paid for uh, 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 whatever losses uh, we had, I think, uh, would be incorrect. Uh, of course, there can be no price, uh, you know, tag put uh, on uh, uh, the losses uh, that we had in terms of uh, the people, innocent people and uh, the people who lost their lives. Uh, because, uh, they, as I said, uh, you know, those are the people who lost their lives uh, because they were involved uh, you know, uh, in fighting uh, terrorism which emanated from Afghanistan uh, and elsewhere, uh, with which Pakistan uh, was directly not concerned. Uh, so, again, they need to acknowledge all the sacrifices that Pakistan has made uh, in terms uh, of money and uh, in terms of uh, uh, treasures and also uh, blood. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, you are right uh, that I think this is a good beginning. Uh, and God. we hope uh, that I think it will move forward. I think you might give me a minute. countries uh, could actually uh, keep whatever, uh, you know, they have been feeling in the past against uh, each other. But I think moving forward for both countries is important because it will serve the interests of not only the two countries but also of the South Asian region. All right, sir. Jal Saab, thank Jackson, you very much minute, for your please. comments. Ambassador Saab, thank you so much, sir, for your presence as well in the show. Amir Saab, thank, thank you so you. much, sir. Uh, and that's all we have for this hour. I'll see you tomorrow at 8.05. Till then, you take good care. Good afternoon.